Okay. So on um, these slides, um, the later ones mostly have videos if you want to go back and kind of watch the videos. Um, but I actually presented this at my school um, on just how I organized my Google Classroom during distance learning. And then I kind of refurbished it and talked about what I did when we were face to face and I used Google Classroom for this presentation. Um, so it's kind of embedded within. Um, but just speaking to distance learning, I'll kind of stay on this tab. Um, I saw a lot of teachers kind of did everything in one doc, and I understand the reasoning with that, like that way it's all in one place for their kids, um, and like, so it's organized for their kids. Um, I did in my weekly learning goals and overview, I kind of had that same idea for my kids, but I posted that as a material. So if they wanted to look overview of the week, like what they wanted to do, it was all in one place. But I found for my kids, making the assignments for each day really helped them better than putting it all in one place. I felt like mine got overwhelmed if they were to just see a document with the entire week listed out and and they just look at it as, oh my goodness, that's so much work. Um, whereas if it's by day and broken up for them, they click on and it helps them chunk and keep in those like 20 to 30 minute windows that I wanted them to work each day. Um, so my kids, told me that they liked that and they liked the way that I named it for them. So each um, week had its own topic and then within the week at the bottom would be kind of the overview for the week that they could kind of look at the schedule for the week and our learning goals and things. Um, and then I would have the day and the name of it. Next time I do, um, if we are virtual in the fall, I think I'm going to put in parentheses a number for the assignment as well. That's what I had done when we were face to face and my kids turned in assignments. Um, and I think I'm gonna kind of blend those two things together for distance learning. Um, it also helped because I had some kids, you know, not start participating until week three or four and they felt overwhelmed. So this, when I was communicating with parents, let me just go in to say, well, just focus on this current week because that's what we're talking about in our Zoom. And then we can go back and work on that um, makeup work. One thing that I also did, I'll go to my, for my grade level classes, is within each assignment, once it loads here, I'm a little slower with Zoom, um, I would write out the directions and then I would also post a screencastify video with it as well. So that would show what it should look like when they log in, they could watch that. And then I would show them like some tips, especially with the discovery ed for math. Um, like, hey, for this one, maybe type this in Desmos and look at some of those key features. Um, so that really helped them having the written directions and the video because it to the, a lot of my kids responded that they really liked when I uploaded those videos with directions and hints as well. Um, I think that was all I had for this one. Yes. Okay. Um, so to get now what I had started with in the year when I was using Google Classroom when we were face to face, I had kids, we did a lot of paper assignments, but they turned everything into me on Google Classroom already. So my kids were used to that, um, but I hadn't done this until distance learning, which was forcing kids to use that classwork tab. A lot of my kids were scrolling through the stream. And um, so they were getting mixed in with the Zoom announcements and other announcements I was posting and they weren't finding all the assignments. So at the start of distance learning, I um, shut down the stream to only have announcements and that forces them to click on the classwork page and then the classwork is organized for them by topics. Um, so to do that in when you're in a general class, can move this over here, um, in the settings wheel, you go down underneath general and class work on the stream and you would hide those notifications. So this makes when kids log into Google Classroom, they have to click the extra tab classwork and then it's organized the way that you want for them. Um, so that was helpful for my kids too, who might have been missing some of the assignments because they just didn't scroll far enough, then everything's chunked together for them. So that was kind of my general setup for um, distance learning. In like the regular marking period, since some of my kids worked with um, 
like the intervention teacher or they worked in study halls and things like that, I had my kids turn in all of their work to me digitally. So at the end of class, if we were working on something, they took a picture of it um, and turned it into me digitally. And that might be something too, if we go back face to face, but we're trying to reduce contact, that could be an option as well to kind of keep things a little safer. Um, but I would organize it into homework. So that was stuff they were doing on their own and classwork. And then I numbered the assignments. Um, so that was really helpful for what correlated with student view. So if they saw they were missing something, oh, assignment number nine, they could go into the marking period classwork and see that it was, uh, see where it is and that also helped for when my kids wanted to redo assignments um it was easier for them to find um it also saved me some time when i was returning things i returned it right after i graded it and so it went to them and um, i saw that kids were actually since it was a notification looking at it more than when i passed back a paper and they would just toss it in the trash um, so that they were actually like looking what what i wrote um and someone even comment back can i redo this and things like that Question so far. I know Sarah's been through my Google Classroom before, and <laughs> Liz, I'm sure you use. <laughs> Everyone has their own way of organizing. You know, like I know when I did my Google Classroom, because I don't use it in the classroom, so I had set it up just for this purpose. Right. I did it, um, like I always posted my link every week, even though it was the same link. The Zoom? Yeah, the Zoom link. Yeah. It made my students feel better knowing that I posted it each and every week so that it was, you know, like a reminder, like, oh, okay, I have this to do. Right. Um, and so, like, I had a topic that was, like, Zoom links for the week. And mm -hmm. so then I had, like, underneath, I would have week of, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they knew, okay, it's for this week. I click on this link. Um, you know, and then I would have, like, the Google Slides that we would use for class, I would have that as Zoom classwork so that they we could go back and they knew, okay, I missed this week, so I need to mm -hmm. click on this. So, you know, that's kind of how I organized mine yeah. versus putting the whole week under, you know, as a topic and then putting everything under that week. Yeah. Um, but yeah so i kind of did the same thing i just had it in a different section um because kids i do think appreciate the notification my niece is a high schooler and she said she'd roll over and look at the notification on her phone when she woke up on which class she had to go to and just click on it um because she stayed in bed like most of my students um <laughs> but yeah so the announcements i would have post with the same link over and over again i do think kids like that too as just an extra reminder um so yeah that is a great idea and then that's another thing I kind of worked with too um, is the kids that missed the live zoom sessions because ours were optional um, I posted that as material for them um, so just as extra it started as assignments and then I realized not all kids have the access is equal um, so I just kind of did it as material um, and then I would post like the link with quizzes and gim kit we normally did that for like half of the class so i could do like the practice link with that within it as well which was nice um because i do think some kids went and did that as well so yeah there's a lot of different ways to organize um and i think it's different for different classes too like my honors pre-calc doesn't look the same as my grade level um, so. um i did find a good idea from twitter from one of my old colleagues lee um so they have a shared google classroom with just the teachers so her and her partner ryan ab and then because it is sometimes a lot of work especially distance learning to write out all the directions and make the video um they just have one where they post an assignment and then they can reuse that for all of their classes um so i think i might try to use that next year um if we are starting virtually with my colleagues i'm kind of having just one google classroom where we dump the assignments um, with the directions already and then we can just reuse that for our different algebra classes I think that would be a great idea um, I'm sure you guys already kind of know this but um, to create a topic in the classwork tab you can do it that way and then to create an assignment within that topic um, you can click in the topic and pick from there or if you forget to do that you can actually drag from the original screen um, and pull it down into the topics so i know some teachers um, were keeping like their zoom link as a classwork and keeping that not in a topic so it would stay at the top um, so kids always had that too a lot of different ideas during this time 
<laughs> um, so then in the giving feedback, I did this um, some different ways uh, throughout distance learning. Um, I started just kind of typing in the comments, obviously, when you go into, um, let me go back to my earlier ones. Where if they had questions. So I just started typing in the private comments and leaving um, that. I didn't used to give a lot of feedback because my kids can redo things for full points except tests and quizzes they can get half points back on. Um, so I don't give them a lot of direction um, because it's kind of for them to join office hours and work with me if they have questions or if they just need to look at it again. Um, I started that way, but then I found that kids it was hard for them to like read something and then look at their document and kind of like, you know, oh, this goes to number nine. What did I actually do wrong there? Um, so with my pre-calc class where they needed a, a little bit more work because the content's a little harder, um, I started using Screencastify, which I know somebody did another pre uh, session on this um, earlier in the week. And I would leave, I know they did the videos. Um, I would leave links to the Screencastify video within there. Um, and the nice thing about Screencastify is you can annotate on the document and then um, it saves automatically in Google Drive. So it's really easy to copy over where like you don't have to wait for it to download and then upload it and then copy the link. It's right there. And then I just posted that in the comments and then kids could click on it, watch, and then they could watch as I annotated on their document, but it didn't save on their document. So they had to go back and fill in what I annotated. So it shows me that they watched it and then um, they could return, resubmit it. So that was a, a nice tool, especially for my honors courses. Um, now with grade level, um, I got a little bit more um, better with feedback um, when I did it digitally and I was actually able to annotate on their document. So I'm gonna reshare a different screen. And this is something I hope that Google Meet also lets us do, um, share our iPad screen. Um, they look like they're working over the summer on a lot of the same um, updates that Zoom had. But when you're in an assignment, so uh, the regular Tuesday ones are things that Brooklyn already did. So I can click on hers and when I hit the pin, it creates a different copy that I can actually write on. So it's a little bit nicer because it goes straight to um, what I'm doing. So if she did something wrong here, like if this was supposed to be a negative three, I could circle that and actually write on it. And I always tried to pick a different color. I told them to try not to use purple because that was my color normally. Um, but uh, that's not supposed to be a negative, but that was nice because then it would save automatically um, and then it's in a different one. So they could click on the edited one and then they could see what I wrote. And this is a little bit more traditional like what we would do on paper and then give back to them. Um, some of my kids who weren't able to do our live Zoom sessions but would be working like in the afternoons or evenings would save it um, and say, hey, can you check this for me? I would click on it be able to write and like circle what they missed. Um, and then say check it now and then they were able to pick it up so it was able we were able to communicate back and forth as they worked through problems um, and then just in the comments say okay I received it can you check it um, so that was really nice digitally um, and it's also really nice when you have a little one to only grade on this little thing than your little computer um, <laughs> just napping in your lap so I'll reshare here so those were the different ways I did feedback. I um, did some sessions this week too, um, and I have some different ideas for next year. So we'll see um, how we start and what kind of things I want to do there. Um, did you, oh yeah, go ahead, Sarah. Have you, have you tried Moat? I have not, I saw that one as a session. So I thought about um, watching that one. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, I feel like that's cool for everybody because we talk about time saving, you know, for the students and for you, of course. Um, 
I don't know how that would go for math so much because like I'm watching you and you're like working out steps with them and so forth. But I'm wondering if that's something too, like in, in Google Classroom that you could just click on the extension there and you can tell them. Right. Yeah. So, so and then yeah. that goes into their comments, right? Yeah. I, somebody so it, about it. You, you can put it in private comments or like, so my, my background's English, but if I highlighted like a paragraph on something that they wrote, and then you highlight that like as a comment and then you just click the little extension and it goes right to that specific oh, that's section because you can put it in so, different places yeah and, and kind of like screencastify like you can put the links and so forth like i, I love screencastify but the most yeah. just me talking yeah yeah because that's what i definitely um i use screencastify a lot and like some of my kids we had to use desmos for parametric equations in pre-calc and they were having trouble how to like so i was able to like record myself with it and send that to them directly too um, but it would be nice to like put it in the place where it goes in the document that that is nice so i yeah. will definitely you can do that with screencastify too i guess it's different for math but like it like as a comment yeah yeah that's what i would post um the links but then my pre-calc we ended up using class kick a lot towards the end because okay. um, that was nice for them but <laughs> so, many, so many options i know which is good yeah um and then so when communicating with parents which is so huge during distance learning um they are um they like to be um complimented first on doing half of our job um <laughs> and then um, they want to know what their kid is missing um what was really helpful is i could go in to the people and they added this click on madison um and you can see overall what they turned in and their grades on things but what really helped me was being able to click on this missing tab and screenshotting um down to well, they're missing these three assignments from distance learning. This is why they have zeros in those assignments. Um, so that was really helpful that they added that during this time. Um, and then if a parent would say, they say this, they turn this in, I could check real quick. I may have missed an email um, when you get 41 late work emails at once. Um, <laughs> so you could go into the individual student and see what they turned in. Um, so that was a nice little feature that they added there too. Um, I had when I presented this at um, at my school, some of the teachers asked about customizing email notifications. Um, you can do that in the regular class. Um, so when you go back to the regular classroom page with all of your classes, if you go down to the settings and you can customize the email notifications that you want so like i don't have when they post because we had to post all on fridays and i would get like a million emails of all my different because i did each day a different assignment um i turned that off um but then you can um choose by class and things what you want work on so i know some teachers um have turned off the resubmits and the lates and they would go in and do that when they had time um i like that extra reminder for myself um I have most of my email notifications on, but that was really nice. Um, and then I turned off, I think there's one where it's, yeah, classes that you're enrolled in, um, you can like turn off work and post from other teachers. So like some of us were in the gifted classes and things like that. Um, so I, I had those turned off at one point too. I think I have them back on now. Um, when I was face to face teaching, I had mentioned this earlier, I had used Google Classroom um, because um, I came from teaching magnet to teach in all, mostly all grade level. And so many of my kids are working with so many different people. And so some of those people were putting things in my mailbox and um, some kids were losing it on the way back to my room and then saying they turned it in and things. So this was just a nice way for consistency um, that when they were finished, they uploaded it automatically and it went to me. It helped me grade faster and return work back faster for them. Um, and then I actually got this idea from a student. Um, the second marking period, I started naming the assignment with a number. So it was easier for them when they were going back and fixing things or if they missed something to go back and find that number as well with the, the name of the assignment. Um, it was nice to differentiate assignments too. Um, if I was putting things in Google Classroom, um, it's easy to click off the kids that you want um, for like my, um, my co-talk class um, sometimes I would kind of reduce the number of uh, number of problems for them um, and then I use the random student selector a lot um, for now that only works in the mobile version but 
um, into class discussion. And I used this sometimes while we were um, in Zoom as well. Oops. Um, it's basically like the popsicle sticks for your room, but if you forgot your popsicle sticks while we were distance learning, um, each class has the random um, student selector in it. So when you go to the people tab, this is only on the mobile device. In the corner, there's like a three squares and a rhombus thing. Um, you can start this uh, student selector and you can go through and pick groups or call on kids as you're kind of discussing things. So that's, that was really nice for distance learning and I used it in regular class. Um, if I just wanted to mix up groups and not do by ability, um, I would, you know, pick the first three and then pick the next three and it was nice and fast and um, it was just a cool tool that they had. Um, I did see over distance learning that they added the originality reports. I'm not an English teacher, but um, I did see that they added that, so I don't know how those work, but hopefully they work well. Um, and then I have used the rubric tool as well, which they updated. I did that in one of my last assignments in pre-calc. Um, so my rubric was 25 points, um, and then the kids could kind of see what was within. And then when I went to grade their assignment, and you can import it from Sheets too. So if you made the rubric in Sheets, if that was easier for you, you can import it and it kind of outlines it for you. But if I go to a student's, sorry, so I'll do somebody who didn't do this. Um, you can click down and it'll show kind of what we talked about. Um, but as you're kind of grading, you kind of remember, um, but then you can click on the different points for each and then it'll add it up automatically for you. And then you can um, return it to the student and then they can see what they got on it. So that was um, a nice feature that they um, revamped during this distance learning time. Remind me not to return that though, because she didn't do that assignment. <laughs> um, so I think that's all I had. Yep. Um, so I'm going to stop recording.